Well, good morning, pro traders, and good afternoon to you wherever you may be in the world. Uh, I hope you guys had an awesome trading week last week. We certainly did. We finished the week very strong, in the words of one of my members. Uh, and uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, seeing how the week ahead uh, offers more opportunities for that. Um, and in fact, what I'm going to do just very quickly before we, we do anything else is uh, just share an account statement for uh, one of you. And uh, it's going to be kept anonymous. Let me just change my share. Uh, so that uh, you can see what's possible when you follow the rules. Where are we? Right, so uh, that is the, uh, uh, the equity curve for an account. That's an evaluation account that was started uh, at the beginning of February. So we about six weeks into this, uh, as you can see, 53 trades have been taken. Uh, half of them won pretty much spot on, half of, uh, were, were lost, 26 lost. So it's uh, a smidgen under 50% were won. Um, and uh, not too bad at all, but you can see here what I mean by convexity. For those of you uh, who have learned to apply this principle, you'll understand that this is a, a great example of what we mean by that, where even though half of the trades were lost because of the size of the losers relative to the size of the winners, uh, your equity curve steadily goes up and up. And in fact, with an open equity on uh, as of the weekend of about 18%, uh, I think this trader is very happy with their progress towards uh, completing their evaluation account uh, and moving through to the next stage of their funded trader program, uh, culminating initially in a $2.5 million live trading account where you get 65% of the profits uh, and successfully doing that for a year, you get upgraded uh, or you get the option to, to enter our elite program where you can trade $10 million accounts and above. So uh, for those of you who are already in the program, uh, you know how this works. If you're not, you might want to consider jumping in. Uh, we not only provide the funding for our members, but also all the tools and knowledge uh, and experience as well in order to make a, a real success of, uh, of trading and becoming a professional trader. All right, so folks, as always, if you, uh, on those of you watching this, if you're not already uh, a subscriber to our channel, don't be afraid, uh, jump in, subscribe to the channel, hit that notifications bell so that you can be notified of all our new training when it comes out. And uh, also, if you enjoy today's uh, video, please do hit that like button. All right, so let me just change this back to our, uh, other screen so we can jump into our charts. There we go. And uh, as I say, it was a, a good week last week. We, we saw some interesting uh, movement across the board. Uh, so let's start off as always with the Euro USD. The interesting thing about this, of course, on the weekly time frame, is that we had a, a pullback of phase two. What I like about this at the moment though is that it's come back and respected this resistance level perfectly through the course of last week. So technically, this is a, a trend. It's not fully established yet as we haven't yet uh, had the next impulse wave. Uh, but still, overall, definitely a trending market, as you can see, looking at the bigger picture uh, with a, a recent resumption uh, at the uh, beginning of this year. All right, so what does that look like on the daily time frame? Here you can see what that phase two or retracement wave looks like. You can see that that uh, resistance level has been tested twice over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and um, we, we, we look to see if we're going to get a resumption on this. For those of you who are trading uh, the uh, hybrid strategy on this time, well, execution on this time frame, uh, we're looking obviously for a bearish break below uh, the dynamic support level of this trend line uh, and the uh, resumption of bearish cyclicity over here. Uh, and of course, if that does translate into establishment of very cyclicity, this is perfect for trading the daily impulse, maybe only next week, but it's certainly something to, to look out for. Uh, but otherwise, nothing else for us to do there. Uh, looking at the cable, you can see similarly, we are, we've had that breakout that we discussed uh, a week ago. Uh, it pulled back as well last week, as you can see. So we've just been monitoring that. Uh, it just did manage to close back inside uh, that resistance level uh, at the end of last week, unlike the euro. And it looks like this on the, uh, uh, the daily timeframe. We spoke about an open 
daily impulse that we had on this. That one, we actually got, we had it stopped out on Wednesday. Uh, quite happy to, to let that one go. Uh, if we don't have the momentum going with us, then we want to exit the trade uh, for as low a cost as possible. So it was a small loser and nothing significant. It did offer us, however, uh, the end of that bearish phase one uh, gave us the opportunity to jump into a very nice overlay. Uh, and uh, that worked out well, because not only did we have the daily impulse on that, we also were trading an H4 impulse there. So uh, that last H4 impulse having gotten stopped out also for a, a loss, uh, but the overlay pulled back all of that. So perfectly happy with that one. All right, so uh, next up is USD JPY. And here you can see the predominant theme of last week, which is the yen weakness. Uh, so interesting, we, we know we had a breakout a week ago. Uh, that really was a simple continuation to the course of last week. We didn't have any pullbacks, uh, not, so we didn't have an opportunity to trade a daily impulse, but our call strategy worked very well uh, on the uh, H4 timeframe. And we had two nice winners. The second one hitting take profit literally just before uh, the end of the trading week. So. Uh, that's all well and good. Still, obviously, looking at this uh, instrument. Those of you who did take profit, you may well have jumped into another trade this morning. I know some of you do avoid Monday mornings, though. So uh, nothing wrong with that. All right. So that's the first of the yen pairs. We'll come back to the other crosses in a minute. In the meantime, uh, USD Swiss on the weekly time frame, having tested that resistance level uh, and failed the test, as you can see, very dramatically pulling back inside of the channel. Uh, looking like this on daily. So outside of the channel on daily, but that high test on weekly looking like a deep inverted V. Uh, so uh, I think we did discuss a week ago that we had some trades during the course of that impulse wave. Uh, but what that ultimately led to was a breakdown in sequentiality of cyclicity on the lower time frame, uh, also giving us a very nice overlay. So uh, that, that was great. I mean, in fact, on this pair, uh, the last time we had a loser was uh, all the way back at the beginning of the month. Um, so uh, last week, in fact, so the week before last week, pardon. So last week was very nice uh, for this instrument. As you can see, it was a successful week, just looking at those few. All right, USD CAD, nothing much to write home about on this one. That bearish impulse candle on weekly uh, being part of, uh, well, really just stuck deep inside of this channel. But it does mean that during the course of last week, uh, in fact, on Friday, we came back to test the support level. So on daily, looking to see what this does. If we do get a bearish breakout, obviously that could lead to us trading this on uh, our lower time frame, execution time frames for a core strategy. For those of you who are trading overlays on this at the boundaries of a range, uh, you'll also be looking out for the lower time frame cyclicity and seeing what it does during the course of today and tomorrow. In fact, we can have a quick look at that. Uh, so far, cyclicity is in fact still intact. There was a possibility this morning of a bullish overlay here, but that has come to an end, literally at the end of the uh, last four hour candle. Uh, but do keep an eye on it. At the moment, it's looking pretty bearish though. We may well get a bearish breakout. Uh, Aussie USD, so um, in fact, we can progress this. I knew I probably would have to do this early. Now that we've already got a higher high during the course of today, means that preceding low down there has in fact now been ringed as a first thing this morning. Uh, it's not going to change anything except maybe uh, move the support level slightly lower of our HDC channel. Otherwise here on a weekly, very much inside of that channel, we don't have any class one W pattern. So not interested in that there at all. Uh, on daily time frame, likewise, this cyclicity is a bit all over the place. So deep inside the channel, no valid patterns, nothing for us to do on that. Uh, we'll see the Aussie creep into other things in a minute. All right, weekly time frame on Kiwi, however, a different story with a valid class 1W pattern uh, as at the close of last week. And in fact, for those folks who are a little bit more aggressive, you might have uh, looked at jumping, or be looking to jump into things over there. But at the moment, there's still nothing showing. You can see that that uh, retracement wave cyclicity came to an end with a, a impulse, impulse, or phase one, phase one. Uh, so we need to, to see what, what is going to happen with this uh, through the course of the week. Uh, as you can see this morning, it's come up to test the resistance level, but so far it hasn't actually made any significant move to break them through. Right, now let's have a look at our yen crosses. On the euro yen, nothing. Uh, a week ago, we discussed the fact that we were back inside of the channel 
Uh, and you can see that that moved all the way towards the top of it. So nothing really for us to do there. <coughs> Excuse me, let me just grab a sip of water. And um, so that's not of interest to us on that time frame. Uh, and likewise here, that deep V pattern on daily. I mean, we've had really strong momentum here with that yen weakness, but we haven't been able to use it on this pair because we haven't got any valid patterns, nor are we outside of that channel. Uh, so let's keep moving along. Similar picture, as you can see with GBP yen, uh, almost a uh, carbon copy. So still nothing for us to do there. Uh, but looking at Swiss yen, uh, as at the close of last week, a bit of a different story where we saw the market break out of the HDC channel uh, on the weekly time frame, uh, and also out, being outside of the channel quite significantly, obviously on the daily time frame. So uh, when I think we discussed this last week, uh, we were a day late, but still, you can see that on Wednesday, we had the market close outside of the channel. On the daily time frame now this being our selection time frame and with that close outside of the channel for those of you who are channel traders because unfortunately it was a class 2w pattern um, then you would uh, be looking to trade that uh, so just worth noting as well of course that at the close of that day it uh, showed that that retracement wave had come to an end giving us reason to believe that we were into the next impulse wave which certainly it did work out that way uh, the first uh, trade that we had was, uh, it took a while for us to get into this one, as you can see, but that went on to hit take profit, this being an H4 impulse. Um, and then again this morning, so for those of you who were waiting for that pullback, uh, we did get it. Um, if you're trading Monday mornings uh, and rather large entry candles, uh, this was certainly an opportunity to go long on this one again. Uh, you probably have to use an ATR stop on this one, given the size of that candle. Uh, nevertheless, a very tradable pair at the moment. Uh, KGN, similarly, except that we've only had this breakout on the weekly time frame also now as of Friday, uh, dropping down to the lower time frame. Uh, similar picture to the Swiss yen, uh, maybe got the breakout a little bit sooner, of course, and I think we did discuss this last week. Uh, so very much an opportunity to start looking for entries uh, for our lower time frame strategy. Uh, we had two, you can see this first one uh, was a loser. Uh, we did get that pullback, uh, but after that, the next opportunity very comfortably went on to hit take profit on uh, Friday, late on Friday as well, funny enough. So um, not as profitable a pair, certainly, but uh, it uh, all works out in the end if you just take the next trade. Right, Aussie yen uh, weekly again break out with that yen weakness on weekly time frame. So we are going to be looking for uh, our daily core strategy entries here. We do need to get a pullback for that here on the execution time frame, being daily. But daily has also been a very good selection time frame, of course, similar to the others. Um, and uh, I, we were discussing a couple of us last week uh, the op opportunity for a, a hybrid. Uh, and that was the first trade that we got into an H4 hybrid. Uh, here it was here, yeah, very nice. We also had an overlay before that. Um, and that went on to hit, uh, take profit for those folks who used the standard targeting for a hybrid. For those of you who are using advanced targeting, uh, you are still in this trade, uh, but with a bit of a pullback happening during the course of today, unless we get a resumption quite soon, uh, then that's uh, probably going to take you out for a similar, well, no, probably a little bit bigger winner than what you would have got with the standard targeting. So very nice reward to risk ratio um, on that. I mean, even just with the standard targeting, we had about a, uh, just under a 30, or about a 30 pip stop with spread and what have you. Uh, and just on the standard targeting, you can see that that's uh, around 240 odd pips. Uh, so very nice. Uh, we, we're very happy with that one. And um, obviously then the, uh, the stock strategy, the H4 impulse gave us an initial entry, standard targeting, hit take profit. The second one, however, if you were looking to scale in, and this is something again we were talking about last week, for those folks who did scale in, uh, you're still in that one. Uh, you remember we only trailed to break even on these, you're still in the trade, but you are at zero risk. So nothing wrong with that. Uh, here's actually the trading stop using the three six rule at the moment that's where you're at on that hybrid all right so uh 
Aussie Yen, very nice. I told you the Aussie did feature, just not Aussie who has got it. And likewise, look at Kiwi. I mean, on a weekly time frame, we, we are still inside of the, the channel. It's testing this morning the resistance level, and you can see it's just bounced off of that for now. Doesn't mean anything uh, except that this is a Monday morning retracement. Um, but here on the daily time frame again, you can see very, very nice. In fact, uh, this is uh, even better because we had a class one W pattern here. So for those folks who were waiting only for class one patterns and with C close outside of the channel, this was this is a textbook example. Um, and certainly from Wednesday, first thing you would have been looking to trade this. Uh, and there we have it. So uh, this was in fact ended up being a, we were looking for a hybrid here as well, but this ended up being a, um, a good old fashioned H4 impulse. But if you're using a trailing stop on this one, you've been able to progress this somewhat as well. Uh, although maybe not because of that six rule, I think that might not be a higher close. In any event, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. In the next couple of hours, you'll have trailed your stop to that point. So if you're looking at a reward to risk here, uh, very nice, thank you very much. Uh, that's that's also been a good trade and you'd still be in that using the uh, advanced targeting. Standard targeting, you would have hit take profit for a very nice win. And if you scaled in with an H4 impulse, that also hit take profit uh, on Friday, just before the closing bell for the week. So uh, here you can see how the yen really helped us finish the week uh, on a very good note. Euro GBP, nothing to look at here. To be honest, I'm going to just skip through uh, these few also phase two here on Euro Swiss, uh, in some ways similar to the Euro USD as far as that picture looks, uh, but we're not spending any time on that at the moment. Uh, Euro CAD also we got we had this inside bar last week, but it is bearish. But we've had two in a row. Let's just have a quick look at what this looks like on the daily time frame. A bit of a mess uh, on the surface of things, but um, something we can talk about maybe in the training later in the week uh, for those folks who want it. We've got. Um, not only did we have a setup to short this market for a, um, a daily impulse, uh, we also had that breakdown in cyclicity and went long on an overlay. So uh, a whole lot of things happening at the same time over here. And that's really what having a portfolio strategy is all about, where um, the one trade ends up losing, but then you have uh, the opposite direction uh, scraping out a winner. So doesn't always result in profit, but it certainly redu reduces the size of the losses at the very least. All right, so that's EuroCAD there on the daily time frame. Nothing for us to do there on the lower time frames, uh, but still want to keep an eye out on Euro Aussie. Very clearly outside of the channel here on weekly, also in that phase two. So uh, let's just have a look on this chart, what that uh, phase two looks like. What we were waiting for on this is this breakdown in bullish cyclicity for that phase two. For those of you who are Ilioticians, you'll recognize a very clear ABC pattern here uh, with the potential now of a first wave one. We've got the break this morning uh, below that support level of our trend line, dynamic support level. Uh, we even had a lower, low, lower close. So we've got phase one, phase one, aggressive reversal, uh, this is absolutely a, a perfect picture with our golden triangle with this potentially coming back into our um, uh, future bearish trend line, something like that. And the uh, triangle looks something like that. So uh, coming back into that zone over here, well, the zone over here, and uh, looking for it to find resistance at some point. Uh, and again, for those of you who are electricians, you know that wave two on average retraces 61.8%. Uh, Remember that is an average, but you can see how that 618 retracement is uh, uh, in this golden triangle zone over there, looking to find a resistance level. And if that rolls over, it gives us our final setup condition, that would be a hybrid. Uh, so uh, it would be a hybrid with the daily time frame being our execution. Right, so uh, interesting times for this one. It's a very nice teaching example, in fact. Right, the last of the Euro crosses, you can see that uh, not quite uh, spectacular with a bit more um, a strength on the, well, weak, the, the Kiwi not showing as much uh, weakness, I beg your pardon, strength as the Aussie. Uh, you can see how it's still, however, found resistance here uh, with the market managing, well, not managing to break through that resistance level. So on daily time frame, also you can see we've got that picture. Uh, we already looked to short this one. And the reason for that 
is that this was a class three M pattern on that Aussie that we just looked at, it was a class four M pattern. This is a class three M pattern. So with the uh, lower close here, and it was an impulse candle. Remember, if we look at the close relative to the previous low, even though that, that looks like it's a bullish candle, um, it was a bearish impulse candle and our software took a trade there immediately. Very nice uh, uh, setup for a, a bearish hybrid. And we've already been able to reduce the open risk on this very significantly. So I'm um, quite happy with that. Almost a break even in fact. So we should be a break even pretty soon. In fact, if this does roll over today and give us a lower uh, close, we will be a break even immediately. So nice one to keep an eye open because if this does roll over, we'll be looking to trade it more aggressively on the lower time frames as well. Right, GBP crosses, not much to look at here by comparison. That's the weekly time frame on GBP Swiss. And there it is on daily. You can see we've also got these ABC patterns, but they're all stacking up inside of the channel. Uh, nothing really to look at. Uh, this is a, a potential class 1W pattern, depending on what happens today. We did have quite a significant gap over the weekend. Uh, but otherwise, there's plenty else for us to look at, to be honest. GBP CAD closed outside of the channel, as we know. We spoke about this last week. But then last week, all we did was we got a high test. Uh, and there's the cyclicity on the daily time frame through the course of last week. There's that high test rolled over. So uh, unfortunately, it didn't give us a bearish impulse candle. So we uh, just missed out on shorting this with a daily impulse because of that final selection criteria. Had this been a four-hour time frame, we would have taken it obviously with that slightly different definition of an impulse candle on that time frame. Uh, and here you can see we, we, we uh, had quite a bit of activity actually. Most of this was overlay related. We had an initial um, attempt to short this on a hybrid, uh, immediately got stopped out, but then we got a, uh, an overlay which pulled back all of that loss plus a little bit more. Um, but then it followed on by another attempt to short this one and that also didn't make it. A uh, relatively small loss, though. A uh, bit of a pity, though. Uh, Friday pullback because it's rolled over and continued in the same direction. But hey, that's trading, folks. So uh, if it's going to happen to me, it's going to happen to you as well. GBP Aussie on the weekly time frame last week, that high test did ring that preceding low. So technically, this over here was therefore a phase two wave, uh, testing that resistance level and rolling right over again and closing near the bottom of that candle. There it goes on uh, Friday. So uh, this was a one where we, we actually also um, uh, didn't do that well out of this over the last uh, couple of weeks. This pair has not been our friend. Uh, we got stopped out on a daily impulse over there and our overlay didn't work out either for a relatively small loss. So this is kind of worst case scenario for us uh, uh, in, in one of these situations. But uh, we don't mind. Looks like we're getting a bearish resumption. We need to see uh, a proper break below the support level. And if that does happen, uh, we aim for a wave. We'll just keep going. Right. Uh, last of our GBP crosses is the uh, GBP New Zealand dollar. A similar picture on weekly time frame, uh, certainly of the last few weekly candles. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and giving us that phase two with that ringed low, or that low being ringed by last week's candle. And uh, and again, here you can see that that is a very similar picture. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but here we also had a class three M pattern. So <clears throat> short of this one uh, for a, I guess it's a, a hybrid with the um, daily time frame, And we, we shorted it right there again with that being a bearish impulse candle, thanks to that gap. So uh, uh, fully into that one. And as you can see, we've already reduced the open risk on this. And if we get a lower close today, we will be at break even. So um, uh, pretty happy with the way that's turning out. Remember, we don't know which trades are going to win and which lose. Uh, but those that win, win big. And those that lose, lose small. Right, CAD Swiss, nothing ready for us to, to do on this one. We have had two bullish impulse candles on the weekly time frame. Uh, so that did give us a breakout on daily. And of course, you can see how uh, on Wednesday last week, we got that outside close, uh, giving us a, uh, uh, well, it was a class one pattern as well, in fact. Uh, and uh, what you must also just remember is, um, <clears throat> yeah, that was the top of the channel at the time. Uh, so for anyone who's looking to trade class one patterns, this would have certainly been an option for you and uh, also as a channel trader. So outside of the channel over there, all well and good. 
uh, which means we dropped down to the lower time frame, execution time frame, and uh, we took the trade over here. So ended up being stopped out at break even. So it didn't work out, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, very happy though to uh, be able to take those. Um, and uh, the one thing that's not showing on this uh, chart is the fact that we also did have an overlay through the course of last week on this time frame. Uh, which was a winner, if I'm not very much mistaken. But let's move on to our, the last of our Aussie crosses, Aussie Swiss <clears throat> weekly time frame again. Multiple impulse candles, the last four, in fact, uh, looking like this on the daily time frame. We only had the breakout, though, because we did have a breakdown in cyclicity, as we discussed uh, last week already on this one. Uh, gave us a, another breakout on Thursday. Uh, and but nothing on Friday. We didn't get any opportunity to, to trade this at all. Our final selection criteria when met, and just as well, it has rolled over uh, this morning. So that wouldn't have worked out. And many of you also have a cutoff time on Friday afternoons, uh, which is also a good policy. All right, Aussie CAD weekly. You can see that there's not really anything happening here. Ring that high. Uh, it also means you know that that weakness that we saw when this bearish uh, candle pulled all the way back inside of the channel. Uh, is still very much in play, and you can see on the daily time frame as well. That's uh, significant bearish cyclicity has been established there. Much more interesting pairs elsewhere to trade. Right, similar picture with Aussie Kiwi. Well, the fact that we're not interested at the moment in uh, this at all. There's uh, we did have that brief breakout on what was that? I think that was uh, Tuesday's close, uh, but Wednesday came back inside. Uh, and that hasn't transpired into anything. So even though technically we're still trending, it was very weak and we tend to stay away from that. Right, Kiwi Swiss, uh, again, one, two, three, four impulse candles in a row on the weekly timeframe. So even though we're not trading in, uh, the daily for execution, the daily timeframe has been very good as a selection timeframe here. Uh, and you can see as well that we also had a uh, outside C close as well as a class one W pattern. Uh, it was slightly messy cyclicity overall. Uh, we did get into a hybrid, as you can see, we didn't have an opportunity to get into anything else through the course of last week, I don't think. Uh, so uh, we're really just a break even on this one because it hasn't actually met our final conditions to be able to start trailing uh, the stop. It hasn't hit the standard take profit yet either. Got pretty close, uh, but it, for, at least for now, it has uh, pulled back. We saw, uh, gap over the weekend, but um, you know we'll just have to wait this one out and see what happens. We're at zero risk on it anyway, so we don't care. Uh, Kiwi CAD weekly, nothing really here at all. You could see last week's candle just gave us a, a ringed high on that preceding wave. Uh, it's really just a, a bit of a mess there, but on the daily time frame, it shows an extended pullback. Uh, we were looking potentially for a hybrid at the end of this phase two. So looking at the cyclicity on the H4 time frame. Uh, this cyclicity remained intact all the way through until what is this Friday? Uh, actually, no, it was Thursday. So <clears throat> Thursday uh, afternoon, well, it's midday, we jumped into a trade here, uh, and ultimately, though, using our trailing stop, we just got stopped out of that one. We're quite happy to take a very small loss on this, uh, as the market has just gone sideways ever since. We don't like wasting our time on that. Right, so that's the currency pairs, folks. Um, let's have a quick look at gold, which as we should all know, last week we had a very significant pullback on gold, that weekly candle coming down, giving us a very strong bearish impulse candle. Uh, here on the daily time frame, you can see that we've actually got the, uh, a bit of bearish cyclicity now having established itself. So bullish cyclicity definitely over and done with. There is the potential for a bullish resumption. That is certainly true. Uh, so if that were to happen, you're trading uh, a, a hybrid, then uh, you might be looking to, to jump in on that to go long. At the moment, there's nothing short for us there, though. The stock markets here, you can see the Dow last week having had a very good week, pulling all the way back inside of the channel uh, on the weekly time frame, uh, which gave us an overlay for those folks who did take that overlay. I know some of you did. Uh, so that just... Uh, uh, we weren't even trading the short, but uh, I think we, we were on a couple of the others. So that was okay. Uh, here's S&P, similar picture. That bearish cyclicity now definitely over with with this bullish impulse candle. 
also showing us that we're into a bullish impulse wave. So strong finish on all of these charts, obviously, with their high level of correlation. Uh, didn't take anything here uh, at all, though, last week. But I think we did on NASDAQ. So there you can see that breakdown in cyclicity as well. Support level now having firmly established itself for the time being, at least. Yeah, here we had a daily impulse. This daily impulse did not work out. So uh, looking across these three stock markets, you can see we had a uh, loss on NASDAQ, but we had the overlay winner um, on the uh, Dow. So the one really just uh, covering the other. So net, no gain for the week. Right, oil. Um, big pullback. Everyone knows about this as well. Uh, we're still very much above the $100 mark, though, so it's still not cheap. Um, and uh, but into a phase two, and you can see that last week's candle uh, ringed that previous high. Uh, so let's see what happens there. But so far this morning, it's very early in the week. Obviously, uh, there is a possibility that this low will be ringed, which would imply a potential bullish resumption, which we are in fact seeing here on the daily time frame. So those folks who don't mind jumping in after a significant V pattern, or in this case, inverted V pattern. Uh, would have entered long on this one for a daily impulse on Friday morning. So uh, that trade so far actually looking all right. Uh, no question about that. Um, and also, if you're trading this on the lower time frames, the fact that this is a trend on this time frame, uh, and we had the reason to believe at the close of Thursday that we were back into a uh, an impulse wave of that trend with that low being ringed means that you would have been looking to go long on this one. And the first opportunity though for an H4 impulse would have been on late on Friday, which you would have probably avoided doing, unfortunately, because it's doing pretty well. Uh, for those of you who traded a hybrid, uh, I know that you would have gone long all the way down here and a uh, very nice trade if you did do that, very nice indeed. Hybrids though, remember they are psychologically quite challenging to trade because they certainly lose more than half of the trades, but we're going through a pretty good period at the moment. Right, uh, second last one to look at, Bitcoin's still not really doing anything as you can see. Here's on the daily time frame. Let's uh, move that across. So uh, yeah, we're just not interested in this at all. Uh, after we uh, got out of break even some time ago on a hybrid. And last but not least is um, the five-year U.S. Treasuries, which has always been a nice one to trade whenever uh, this market is moving. Uh, it's still going south. We discussed uh, a week ago the fact that we were into a phase two. Well, it looks like uh, as of uh, uh, this morning, that may well have come to an end. Now, we, we were in a bearish hybrid on this from some time ago. That's our tra trading stop over here using that two five-step rule. Uh, still looking absolutely fine. Um, and we'll pretty soon, maybe at the end of tomorrow, or well, certainly by the end of tomorrow, so maybe we're still in the trade, we'll be able to, to lock in even more profit on this one. And that's on uh, a daily hybrid. If you're looking to trade a daily impulse, if today were to close like this, it's absolutely a short on a daily impulse. So for those of you on the, uh, your funded accounts, um, keep an eye open for, for that as well. Uh, the H4 time frame, this one's really been quite easy to trade. Uh, we, we are in a short on this one that we got into there at, uh, what's that, 5 p.m.? I beg your pardon, not 5 p.m. It would have been four hours later uh, on the, the 15th. Now, it's just been going sideways. Uh, and if you're, using, uh, well, if you're using advanced targeting on this one, I mean, we're already at break even at this, but you need to remember, you need to hit that threshold before you can start. Uh, trailing your stop. Even if you had done, however, using the three six rule, then you should still be in this trade. Uh, you shouldn't have been stopped out on this one either, I don't think. Uh, but remember that threshold rule. All right, so that's the last of them. As you can see, last week was a good week. Uh, we've, we've had some very quiet trading conditions for some time now, as I've mentioned um, many times before, but uh, a lot of action at the moment. Uh, remember though that Trading successfully is all about first and foremost managing your downside, managing your risk. So make sure that you've got very rigorous rule sets for that and that you follow them. And then, folks, let the upside look after itself. That really is what trading is all about. All right. As always, if you've got any questions, you know, just please put them into the uh, 
the comments below. Uh, happy to answer those. Uh, I do answer them all myself, so please do. And uh, if there's uh, any training requirements, anything that you'd like me to, to go over and reinforce, please uh, put those in there as well and go for it. So if, you, if you're not familiar with our training, then also we will put a link below this for you to be able to go and check out our free training. You can learn how to trade a professional trading strategy uh, by clicking on that link, it won't cost you a dime. And uh, it is a three day uh, online training course that you can attend. Uh, and that also will uh, open up some other uh, training opportunities for you. All right, folks. So uh, I think that this is looking like a promising week so far. Obviously things can change very, very quickly, which is why we always manage our risks so aggressively. Uh, but uh, I hope you have an awesome week ahead as we had last week. Uh, look forward to hearing all of those, uh, those good stories and about all those wins in a week's time. All right, folks, have a great week. I'll chat to you all soon. Bye for now.